We got an exclusive interview with the star of Netflix's Arcane. She dishes on going 150% for the role, plus exactly how much she was inspired by Harley Quinn. Who is it? Keep watching for that and a whole lot more. Riot Games attempted to partner with established Hollywood players when an animated TV show based on the League of Legends universe was first put forward. However, it quickly became clear that if they wanted Arcane to turn out how they envisioned it, they would simply have to make it themselves. Riot co-founders Brandon Beck and Mark Merrill care deeply about League and its community of players. So the last thing they wanted was their prized IP falling into the hands of people who didn't understand the game. The duo ultimately decided to hand the reins to Christian Link and Alex Yi, two longtime Riot staff members who live and breathe League of Legends. Merrill said during a candid interview with the Los Angeles Times, If you don't fully appreciate the journey our players have been on with these characters, there are risks that can feel in all sorts of subtle ways inauthentic. We concluded that no one is going to care to the same degree as Rioters. That is a fundamental part of the equation. The learning curve was steep, but the final product proved that the do-it-yourself approach was the right one to take," Merrill said. We can add on the great capabilities that other creators can have, but we cannot sacrifice the love, the attention to detail, and the historical knowledge and perspective that rioters have. Riot Games got serious about making inroads in Hollywood in late 2020, when the company named veteran Netflix exec Shauna Spenley as its new global president of entertainment. Mark Merrill told Deadline at the time, Sean has proven track record in creative development, product design, team building, and marketing expertise will be essential in helping Riot fulfill its mission. It's easy to assume that Spen Lee's history with the streaming giant is why Arcane ended up on Netflix. Even still, the decision was more to do with League of Legends having a global audience than anything else. Speaking to Screen Rant, Christian Link explained why Netflix was the ideal home for the show. He said, I think a lot of us, especially when you grew up in a place like Europe, you're kind of used to the experience of like, oh, there's my favorite show or movie or game coming out in the US first, and maybe someday I'll get it too. I think that is something that the world has luckily shifted away from, but for us it's still something very real. That even a slight delay has our audience up in arms, and rightfully so. So the reason for Netflix was there was the capability to release this really at the same time. The fact that Netflix subscribers enjoyed Castlevania so much only made that decision easier, according to the Los Angeles Times. Getting the animation right was crucial, but as inventive and easy on the eyes as Arcane is, it simply wouldn't have worked without the right voice actors. Showrunners Christian Link and Alex Yi sat down for a joint interview with Screen Rant. They revealed that the casting process caused some major headaches, especially when it came to Jinx, a massively popular character in the League of Legends community. Yi admitted, Jinx was the scariest. We knew from the very beginning she would be one of the toughest roles to really nail, you know? She's so big and everything is externalized in the game. But of course, we knew we wanted in the show to sort of get to peer beneath that layer and find kind of the subtlety and nuance for the character. In the end, Ella Purnell landed the gig, and Yi couldn't have been happier with the performance. He said, I think Ella did a fantastic job of nailing that. Happy progress day! Yi went on to reveal that the role of prosthetic-eyed arcane antagonist Silco was also extremely hard to cast. He explained, I just had this sort of sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach as I was listening to the auditions where I was like, oh god, this is gonna be impossible. Then Jason Spizak's voice was like the clouds parting because from the first second of the first audition, he just was Silco. Ready to rise to the surface. Before Arcane, Purnell was best known for her role in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Now her enthusiastic voice performance has been praised by the creators of Arcane, but it actually took Ella Purnell a little while to get into the rhythm of Jinx. She's an especially intense and, more often than not, totally unhinged League of Legends champion. Speaking to Looper in an exclusive interview, the actor discussed how showrunners Christian Link and Alex Yi gave her a crash course in League lore and encouraged her to ramp up the crazy. Hey, this was my first ever voiceover job, so I didn't really know what I was doing. And initially I came in playing her quite like straight and naturalistic mm -hmm. and normal. And they spoke to me about it and we collaborated and they showed me some like videos and pictures of like who she was and explained the world of League of Legends like further and the vision for Arcane. The showrunner recognized that she was giving it 100% in the voiceover booth, but they wanted her to, quote, go in at 150 instead. And I was like, you guys sure? Because my 150 is like, you're 250. They were like, do it. <laughs> 
did it, had so much fun. Burnell was able to find just the right amount of extreme percent to pull off such an incredible character. Both fans and critics are enthralled with her voiceover performance of Jinx. That's me! It's no secret that Jinx shares a number of traits with Harley Quinn. League of Legends fans have been theorizing about who would win in a fight for years now. Ella Purnell actually turned to DC's demented anti-hero for inspiration, explaining that she thought Quinn had fantastic qualities for a violent female villain. Harlequin was definitely a great like jumping off point for that. And I think what Harlequin has that I love is this just raw chaos. It's just right. like, she doesn't care. Nobody gets in her way, right? It's just like chaotic, violent, anarchy energy. And we see that a lot with men, and we don't see that often with women. Another famous female character that gives off these vibes is Bellatrix Lestrange, the bushy-haired, wild-eyed Death Eater from the Harry Potter franchise. Burnell said that she has always been a huge fan of Helena Bonham Carter, who brilliantly brought the character to life in the Harry Potter movies. Burnell added, Yeah, Helena Bonham Carter has always been a huge influence for me, so maybe there was like little vibes of that too. Riot Games co-founder Mark Merrill has been open about the fact that he sees Pixar as an inspiration. He said that it was the one company that has managed to sustain creative excellence over a very long period of time. However, the last thing he wants is for Riot to become another arm of Disney. In fact, the creators of Arcane went down a very anti-Disney route while putting the show together. Shauna Spenley told the Los Angeles Times, When you're building great IP and we hope to do that, we want our players to feel like it was holistically built for them. Versus this feeling as different business units, that's a very bad outcome. The former Netflix exec went on to explain that her job as Riot's global president of entertainment isn't to make movies and TV shows the new focus of the company. Arcane is designed to stand on its own as a contained story, while simultaneously introducing newbies to the main attraction, the game. She said, All of this is about games at the center of culture. It's the inverse of what a Disney would do. They're putting their films at the center of culture. We really see that games are the center of culture, and these complement that experience. Being longtime members of the Riot Games family, Arcane Masterminds, Christian Link, and Alex Yi are well versed in the vast world of League of Legends. There's more than enough lore for a cinematic universe. Nevertheless, despite the distinctly anti Hollywood approach the company adopted while developing the series, Link and Yi took cues from a number of existing fantasy franchises. Speaking to Sci Fi, Yi revealed which universes they looked to for inspiration. Yi said, you literally cannot go through one story meeting with Christian without getting at least one Lord of the Rings reference and at least one Harry Potter reference. He went on to reveal that Marvel's Netflix show Daredevil was another inspiration for them. The arcane intro has very distinct Daredevil vibes. Meanwhile, editor Lawrence Gann, who plied his trade on the Lego Movie 2, told Coming Soon that Arcane also shares some similarities with the biggest fantasy TV show of recent times. He said, It feels like you're watching an episode of Game of Thrones sometimes. Just when you think you've got it figured out, surprise, now you're crying. Arcane introduced those unfamiliar with League of Legends to some beloved characters from the game, but the show barely scratches the surface when it comes to League champions. There are over 150 playable characters at the time, and showrunners Christian Link and Alex Yi knew that it would be a difficult balancing act. Yi told Sci-Fi, We definitely wanted to get as many champions as we could into the show without feeling like we were sacrificing the quality of the story for any of the ones that we really want to focus on. It makes the world feel small when all these characters just happen to be in the same town and all friends together. He went on to reveal that they knew from the beginning that if Arcane was to have any kind of longevity, it made sense to hold back during the first season. We knew we wanted to fill it out and give it a sense of the champions you know and then the entire world in between them. To no surprise, League of Legends fans began hunting for easter eggs and hints about which characters might be introduced down the line from the moment the first three episodes dropped. And all the while this question lingers before you. Have you had enough? All the best fantasy novels, games, films, and TV shows have something to say about the real world, no matter how outlandish the setting and characters are. Arcane is no different. In fact, Christian Link was directly inspired by the world events that took place as the show was being developed. Link told Hardware Zone, For me, when we started this project, there were a lot of questions that we felt we needed to address regarding things like power and social structure. There were many political figures and movements that left an impression on our lives during this period. And although it's certainly different for everyone, I think we live in a very defining time. If dangerous ideas didn't excite the imagination, we would never wander astray. One of the main themes of Arcane is clashing belief systems and values, though this wasn't necessarily the case during the show's infancy. Over time, it became an essential part of the story. 
a result of the same thing playing out in the real world," Link said. As people, we've seen so many situations where it's really easy for one side to just believe the other is wrong due to ignorance, and this concept was just something that grew louder and louder as we continued working on Arcane. Piltover and Zorn are hitting closer to home than you think, it seems. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.